Hi everyone, and welcome to the Scatman demo. I'm Art, one of the co-founders here at Scatman, and today I'd love to take you through a demo of our platform. For those who don't know, Scatman is a 100% cloud platform that integrates with Microsoft Endpoint Manager to simplify and automate your application installs and updates for your Windows devices. But we don't stop there, we also add functionality to MIM to further enhance the product and help you and your users with your applications. And we don't just do that for the applications we provide, we also give you access to those features so that you can leverage them for your own private applications. Let's dive into it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to register on our portal where you can just register for a 15 day free trial. And you can sign with your Microsoft account or your Azure AD account and we'll reuse that to see uh, who you are, who your tenant is, so to do some authentication. And then you get some terms and conditions. When you accept those terms and conditions, we can continue. And then you can actually give us permissions to manage applications in your tenant. So there's a few write permissions that we need. Read, write, into an apps, makes sense, right? Also, read write into devices. I'll explain during the demo why we need those. And read write uh, group memberships and create groups. I'll also explain during the demo why we need those specific permissions. Once you accept that, there is some company information that you need to fill out, which I'll quickly do here. And when that's done, we're good to go. So when we click continue here, then we get to the dashboard where, as you can see, there's not a lot of stuff going on yet. Obviously, this is going to get populated over time. So as time progresses and we install apps, we'll see those uh, pop up on this dashboard as well. Where the cool stuff happens is in the App Store, where we currently have 637 public applications. All of those applications will manage and maintain for you uh, according to the settings that we're going to configure in a minute here. So let's just take a, an Adobe Reader here. Uh, I'll just install that. Uh, this is the basic UI with just a few options. So we try to make that simple as well. So that if you have a customer, for example, that uh, doesn't have a lot of Intune knowledge, they can uh, pretty easily manage those apps themselves should they want to. And first of all, you can select the language for that app. Um, so when you select a language, we'll make sure the application gets installed in that specific language. When you select multi-language, we'll actually let the application itself decide in which language it should display. Uh, so let's just pick English here. Then you can choose whether or not you want to create a desktop shortcut. And on the next tab, you can create some assignments to either all devices, specific users. This is the reason why we need permissions to create um, groups in your tenant, because Intune doesn't support assigning applications to users, only to groups. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a group and populate that group with those users that you select in here. But obviously, any existing group that you might have in your environment is going to work as well. You can just enable that here and we'll make sure that the application gets assigned to that group. So I'll just create some, some specific users here. And then when you click Install, the application gets created and it's going to take a few minutes before it's uh, created in your Intune tenant and after those few minutes it's going to start deploying down to your devices. So let's take uh, 7-Zip as our next app. Uh, I'll show the advanced view there so when you enable the advanced view then you get a few more additional options where you can also select the business for the application again whether or not you want to create a desktop shortcut. Also, some configuration options about the notification. So when we see an application is in use, we're going to show a notification to the user asking them uh, to close the application or to postpone that update. So if there's a 7 zip running, then we would show that notification. Obviously, when it's not running, then we would just update silently. And you can choose which style of notification we're going to show there. Please select the model one. It's going to look a lot better. And we're going to migrate to that one over time anyways. Um, then you can also define the number of days we should try to silently update an application. So imagine that we're releasing an update of 7-Zip today. Then we would first try to silently install that update the first two days. If we're unable to, to install that update because the application is in use, we would only start showing that notification after two days. Uh, if we can update it silently within those two days, then, then the user will never even notice that we've updated his 7-Zip. Uh, 
You can also define how many times the user can postpone that uh, notification. So here it's configured up to three times. The fourth time they'll get forced to actually install that update. And this is the timeout of that notification. So after 90 minutes, we would automatically close all of the applications that we need to be closed here to make sure that we can actually update that app. And I'm just gonna select uh, English here. And then we go next to the commands bit. That's where you can see uh, what we run and also customize it. So we use PowerShell App Deployment Toolkit. That's a very powerful framework with a lot of logic, a lot of functionality in there. And we're going to use that to deploy all of our applications. And what we also do is we try to think about any existing scenario you might have. So in this example, we're using 64-bit uh, MSI, for example, for 7-zip, uh, which is not compatible with the executable versions 7-zip also has executable versions. So we're gonna uninstall that executable version if we find it on your device to make sure that our, to make sure that our uh, MSI can actually take over. And we're also gonna uninstall the 32-bit MSI if we find it on your device uh, to make sure that again, our 64-bit MSI can actually take over. If you want to, you can add stuff in here, you can remove stuff in here, and then we'll actually run that install and all of the consecutive updates with that specific uh, command that you may have added in here. Then there's the install bit where we're just going to uh, install the application where we, we use placeholders like this, for example, to dynamically change based on the installer file name. Um, and in the post install bit is where we are configuring the language typically. So this is where uh, for 7zip you can see, for example, that we're creating a rich key to make sure that it actually gets deployed in English. Uh, it's also typically where we disable the auto updates of that app to make sure that our update rings can actually take over the updating mechanism of, of that application. And again, feel free to add or remove stuff in here and then we'll actually run it every time with that additional command that you've, you may have added in there. Next, you get to the update rings. So by default, we're installing a single app. That means that when we update 7-zip, uh, it'll immediately get updated for all of those uh, devices that are in scope of that assignment. If we enable update rings, we're actually going to create three separate uh, applications in your Intune tenants, and we're going to update those with a delay. So imagine that we're updating 7-zip today, then the fast ring would get updated straight away. The slow ring we would update after 10 days and the release ring we would update after 30 days. And on the assignments page for each of those rings, you can create assignments so that you can divide your users or devices into separate uh, rings. Then on the advanced page, on the dependencies page, you can also create dependencies. So that 7-zip we've installed just now, uh, we can select that here. And if we create that as a dependency, uh, we would make sure, or actually Intune would make sure that uh, Adobe gets installed before we're actually going to install 7-zip uh, on that device. Let's remove that for now because that obviously doesn't make any sense. Um, so I'll just create some assignments here for the fast ring. Uh, we support two types of assignments here that's available and required. Required. required means that uh, the application is going to get installed on the device. The user doesn't have a choice. When you select, select available, uh, we're going to make that application available in the company portal for the user to install. So I'm just going to select some uh, groups here and that user will be able to go to the company portal and install 7-zip from that company portal should they want to. Um, then. Uh, what we're going to automatically do as well is, let's imagine for a second that we're making it available for all users, we're going to automatically create an uh, update only app as well. I'll explain in a second how that works. It works a bit different than the regular available apps. So we're just making some available assignments here uh, so that they can, those users can decide if they want to install the application themselves or not. So what we just talked about is those uh, update only apps. How those work is a bit different. So these are actually going to be required for the same assignments as you've selected on the available app, if you've enabled that. Uh, what that means is that app is going to be required for that same group, which is not what you want. Obviously, you want it to be uh, available and only get updated if it's already present on the device. So what we're going to do there to make sure that we don't install it all the time is we're going to make use of the requirement script feature in Intune and we're going to check on the device if there is a 7-zip, for example, 
that's already installed in apps and features and only if there's already a 7-zip installed in apps and features will update it to the latest version if we can't find a 7-zip in apps and features we'll say not applicable and and we won't install that application on that device so it's a kind of conditional update mechanism so only if we find an application already installed on your device we'll update it to the latest version if we don't find that 7-zip we won't touch your device at all and then there's a logic in there where we automatically make exclude, exclude assignments as well to make sure that if your user for some reason is a member of both groups, that it doesn't start continuously flipping between those two versions, etc., etc. And last but not least, there's uninstall as well. Um, so any application that's available in our portal, you can uninstall as well. And what we're going to do there is we're actually going to make sure that uh, any version of 7-Zip gets uninstalled on your device. So we're going to again check in apps and features to see if there's a 7-Zip installed. If there is, we'll uninstall it. If there isn't, we won't uh, touch it and, and we won't uh, do anything with that device. Now, there's also for all of those apps a checkbox on the right bottom corner. What that's going to do is if you check that, we're just going to create that uninstall app in your tenant without creating any assignments. And we will never touch any of those assignments in your portal unless you click the redeploy button. I'll show it in a second. So if you uh, just have us, if you check the checkbox, we'll just create the app without any type of assignment in your tenant. And now that I've clicked install, what just happened is I've posted to our uh, packaging API that's now downloading all of the source files. It's checking if the hashes of those source files still match with uh, the, the hashes we've got in our database. Because every time we update an app, we run all of those source files through VirusTotal. Then we get those hashes out, we store them in our database, and we make sure that when we create the package, we're going to check again if those hashes still match. Then we're going to do a real-time scan with ClamAV, ClamAV and Defender to make sure that those are still uh, save those files to be 200% sure they're, they're clean. And then when they are, we're, we'll uh, inject all of those commands into our PowerShell templates. We'll sign that with our code signing certificate. We'll wrap all of that in and into Win. And the wrapping in the Intuin also does encryption and stuff. We'll upload all of that to your Intune tenant, and then that application will be available in your tenant with those assignments that you've created. While that's going on, that app is grayed out here. So in a few minutes, it will no longer be grayed out, and you'll be able to manage it, like, for example, this uh, Acrobat Reader that we've installed just now. A few moments later. And here we now have our 7-zip that is no longer grayed out. You can see some of the properties of the 7-zip we've just installed. And imagine that we're updating 7-zip to 21.08 today. Uh, something very important breaks in your environment. You can just pause the updates for those other update rings, fix whatever is causing the issue, and re-enable those update rings. And it will update again according to the delay that you've configured here. On the other hand, imagine that there is a zero day in 7-Zip and you don't want to wait the 10 and 30 days before you push the update and actually you want to expedite the update. You can overwrite the settings here, update the application straight away. And for this specific update, for this one update, we'll no longer give the user the option to, to silently uh, to postpone the update or we'll no longer silently postpone the update before we deploy it. And there is also a redeploy option, which is going to delete application into and recreate it, which is in turn going to trigger a reinstall on all of your devices and some other modification options. Like I said, we have around 550 public applications available in our portal. If there is a an application missing you can just request it any public application will package for free and will also update for free a public application is an application that we can just download from the internet without providing an email address an account stuff like that and it can also be automated out of the box if you have any other application that for example does require an account to be able to download it we can package those as well but those are obviously not free we'll upload those applications to your tenant to your part of scapman and you'll be able to uh, access that application and install it but we won't automatically update it for you if you want us to update it you can request that as well so for example i'll take this application that we've prepared here that we've packaged and you can just request an update for an application and we can update it for you as well and it'll get updated according to the settings that you've got configured for that specific installation 
if you feel confident enough to update it yourself, it's also an option. You can just add the new version number here. Uh, so we'll do 1.1 now, upload some new installer files, which are just the MSIs or the executables, by the way, not an Intuin file. And then you can create the new detection rules for that specific version and you're already good to go because we really standardize all of our applications. There's a real chance that you may not even have to change anything in the commands because we use placeholders like this so that we can dynamically change uh, based on the application file name, on the installer file name. Now, if you don't want to use that service, that's perfectly fine. You can also just upload your own application in here. You can fill out some basic information about the application. Um, pretty much the same information that you would have to fill out in Intune anyways. You can fill out the processes here. If you fill those out, then you can actually use the features that we've added in our platform. So if you fill out the processes, those are the processes that will check on the device to see if you have to show a notification for the user or not. And if those processes are running, we'll show the notification and ask the user to close them or to, to postpone the application. And the apps and features part is the thing we use to um, update any available application or to automate for the update only application that's going to detect if there is a previous version of the application on the device. And we'll also use that for the uninstall assignments. If we find an application on the device with that specific name, we'll run the uninstall script for, script for that specific application. And then again, you can upload some installer files here, uh, configure the, the install commands, there's a large support article that explains all the details in here, but anything that you can PowerShell or that is available in PowerShell App Deployment Toolkit, you can use in here. PowerShell App Deployment Toolkit is a very powerful framework with a lot of predefined functionality and commandlets that makes your life a lot easier. So feel free to use that as well. Create some detection rules in here and you're good to go. When you upload the application, it will be available in your app store and you'll be able to install it like any other application. Next up is preferences, where we're gonna make it very easy for you to create a set of registry keys. So you can just enter a name for that collection of registry keys, choose in which hive you would like to create those keys. And then, uh, so if you wanna create or actually delete them, we can also do deletes. Provide the path for those keys and then select the value type and we'll create that key for you. So, so what we're actually going to do here is we're going to create an application, an Intune Win app in your Intune tenant that we're going to assign to either all devices or whatever you select here. And then we'll make sure it gets installed for all of those users or devices and, and we'll create that registry key or delete those registry keys on those devices. So it's going to take a few seconds as well to deploy and then once that's done you're good to go next part is the auditing so every action that you take gets audited as well in the environment uh, that's usually not very interesting until it's interesting uh, then we get to the reporting section which is a bit more interesting i'm going to switch to a different tenant here because that tenant has a bit more history obviously the reporting only gets populated over time and here for each application you can check what the install status is across your environment but you can also select all of the applications that you're installing in your environment to really get an aggregated overview of all of that data filter based on device or windows version stuff like that you can also export all of that data to a csv go back in time to figure out what it looked like some time ago and for all the applications that uh, failed because we know exactly where the the log files are actually at so every time we install an application we generate log files and because we have standardized that and because we know which application failed we are actually going to make it very easy for you to collect those log files so you can just um, go to our portal when we see an application failed we will have automatically triggered the log collection feature in intune and you can just download the log file here and see what actually went wrong in those log files without having to figure out what the path is yourself spending a couple of hours on that and then spending a couple of hours again waiting for the log files to actually be uploaded to your intune tenant the next part is a naming convention um, so we are pushing down multiple applications to your intune tenant as i explained the naming convention for those applications in intune you can configure here so there's quite a few options in here 
You can also configure the branding for those uh, notifications that we show. So this is the classic pop-up that we're currently showing. This logo you can customize uh, with your own logo and it will also be automatically implemented on the new modern pop-up that we're using, which will look uh, like this and it will show up in the right bottom corner so that it looks like a toast notification. In the notification section, you can invite, uh, you can let us know which email addresses you have to send an email to every day. So once a day, we're going to send a digest of the applications that we've updated in the last 24 hours, which applications have updated spending, etc. So all of those email addresses you can add in here. And you can also invite additional admins in here to manage the platform with you. We currently support two roles for end customers. That's a global admin and a read-only admin. The names are pretty self-explanatory. A read-only admin can only read stuff, whereas a full admin can manage everything in here. This is the UI that a uh, regular customer gets. So they get all of these options. If you're a managed service provider, you get a few additional buttons. So first of all, we uh, you can very easily switch between tenants. On the right bottom corner, you can just be switch between your tenants and, and all of your customers to see what's going on, to see what it looks like. And you have an aggregated dashboard of all of that data, really an overview of all of your customers at the same time. Obviously, you can drill down to specific customers should you want to filter here on which apps have failed, etc., etc. So you really get an, a better overview of, of all of that data. You can also invite customers here. There are two ways on, on how you can connect to your customer. We can explain that in, in a session later on. But if you connect as an MSP, you will be able to manage them. If you connect as a reseller, uh, you won't be able to manage them. And, and it will just be an administrative link between you and the customer. And you get an additional role as well, a customer admin. The customer admin is able to manage all of the customers and all of the applications within a customer, but he's not able to manage anything inside the MSP tenant himself. And then last but not least, for the uh, MSPs, we have application sets. So you probably have a lot of customers that are using the same set of, let's say, 25 applications. So even though it's already pretty easy in our platform to deploy those apps, we've tried to make, make it even easier. And you can just here in the application sets manage a lot of applications and a lot of customers at the same time. So imagine that you're onboarding a new customer. These are the applications that you want to assign to all of your customers. You can just select that new customer here and that customer is automatically going to get all of those applications. So within just a few clicks, he gets all of those apps. Or if you want to add a default application, you can just select it here. The options in here are pretty similar to, to what we've seen before. So you get the same type of notification stuff, um, but there is no assignments uh tab here because we are going to assign all of these applications to all users and all devices in these specific tenants um, you can also select available here and what we'll do then is use the same logic where we're going to make an application available and we're going to automatically create the update only app in in here as well so all of that logic is in here and then all of those customers would all of a sudden get this specific application we also have update rings in the application sets but those work slightly different than your usual update rings. Here, you're going to assign a customer to a specific update ring instead of a subset of those users within that customer. So let's uncheck this one here, and then we can select it in a slow ring. And then the, the MSP customer, the, the MSP278 customer that's in the slow ring now would get updated after only two days instead of being updated after four days, for example. And when you save that, it gets saved and it will get deployed down according to that configuration. And it allows you to really manage several hundred customers and several hundred applications with just a few clicks. That's it for our demo. Thank you for your time. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to us at infoscapman.com or any of these phone numbers or feel free to get started on your trial or to book a demo via our website. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.